Welcome back to Athletic Everyday in number 115. Got my heavier cleans and squats today, as well as my plyometric warm up. Uh, tried out a couple of different plyometric drawers and just some sort of messing around, uh, you know, multi directional kind of running movements to warm up. So, you know, a little bit of karaoke, a little bit of lateral shuffling, a little bit of, you know, just multi directional locomotive exercises just to move my body through different planes of motion in a kind of, again, you know, sort of athletic, sort of like fluid, uh, flowing sort of pattern, uh, just to make the warm-up more fun, but also to add some variety into my into my program. You know, what you do for the warm-up, um, it doesn't really matter all that much as long as it raises your core body temperature and mobilizes the joints. Uh, you know, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with the RAMP protocol, but the RAMP stands for raise, activate, mobilize, and potentiate. So raise your body temperature, activate the muscles which you're going to be using in the workout, mobilize the necessary joints that you're going to be using in the workout and then potentiate by stimulating the muscles to reduce either high force or you know high velocity force you know uh, peak power output or relatively high power output so you can achieve that through plyometrics to potentiate the the, the muscles of the lower body so one of the drills that i was trying out today was um, a penultimate step drill so this is like a gliding penultimate step so you sort of getting used to lowering your hips and, and sort of following that penultimate step in with the hips because I noticed that when I was watching back a couple of my jumping videos, my penultimate step is really not as long as it could be, especially on my right left plant. So this one here, um, it's definitely not, yeah, that right left plant there. I'll notice that when I do my last step, my block foot, or is it my plant foot? <laughs> last two strides, whatever they are, uh, I notice that when I do a left right, uh, I do plant heel and then I go sort of like outside knife edge of the foot so I can really sort of turn into that jump to create that nice breaking force. But when I do right left, I do heel, but then on the left side, I'll do heel toe again. So it'll be heel toe, heel toe when I'm doing uh, right left. So that's something I do need to work on. And again, that's ingraining the correct mo motor pattern. doesn't matter how strong you are or how fast you are. If you don't have the right jump technique, then you're never going to be able to jump as high as you could be. And I think learning to do effective jump technique you can think about that as kind of like a low-hanging fruit um, it's something that anyone can work on and it can really add inches to your vertical jump and as you guys know i'm pretty close to that threshold of dunking on 10 feet you know my max vert touch at the moment i mean the other day was 10 foot six but you know with a good lob that is high enough to dunk on 10 feet now uh, i don't actually have the opportunity to do a good enough lob here because i don't know if you can tell but the floor around here is uneven and i don't really have enough space to do a full approach jump and the timing with these two bars that come across here it's like trying to thread a needle through um <laughs> it's like trying to thread the needle if you have to try and throw the ball and then you know jump up it's just not even worth trying so i'm gonna have to go find a couple courts that will be nearby because you know the weather's nice some will allow me to do that um, where I can go and get some full approach jumps with a lob and practice the timing on the lob off of both uh, plants. So anyway, moving into the rest of the workout, I wanted to do some heavier cleans today. Last week I did uh, three sets of one with 120 kilos. And to this week I managed to get, I think it was four or five sets of one with 120. And I'm not gonna lie, they weren't feeling too great to be honest with you. Um, one of them I got pinned, one of them I missed it. Um, I think this is the one where I miss. Oh no, this is probably the best one actually. <laughs> I think it's this one where I miss and it's all just because whenever I'm making that contact with the bar, I have a tendency to let the bar shoot away from me. So I'm very, I have a very sort of strong tendency to want to overemphasize the contact with the hips or the thighs, I guess. And what that does, it results in the bar being pressed pushed far away from me, too far away from me, which means I either have to jump forward or I'm going to lose the bar forwards, or I'm going to have to do a, a stand up like in the first rep you saw there where I had to stand up and like walk it out. But you know, still got more reps in with 120 this week. And I think next week I'm going to try and go maybe for 125, which would be equal to my current 1RM clean. So it'll be interesting to see if I can hit a new PR in the clean just from doing cleans twice a week. You know, I've got my higher volume cleans earlier on in the week on Wednesday, and I've got my uh, lower volume high intensity cleans on Sundays, which is today. Uh, moving on to the back squats. Uh, last week I did 145 for sets of two. This week I'm doing 150. I'm not gonna lie, 150 moved okay. 
Uh, but I've always had this issue with whenever I do back squats, I feel like when I push out of the hole, my knees have a tendency, they don't cave in to the point where I'm having knee valgus, but they do push in a little bit where that is just my adductors. So all of the muscles on the inner thigh of my leg. I think they take over a little bit too much. I'm very, um, I guess you could say adductor dominant. And my hip abductors are obviously not doing their job. I feel like my glutes, my, my glute maximus is doing a lot of, uh, is doing a fantastic job of extending my hip as I stand up. But when I push out of that hole and utilize that stretch reflex, uh, in that split second, I think the adductors take over a little bit too much. And then as a result, I'm sort of playing catch up by trying to manually force my knees out. So one thing I did notice was from practicing lunges the other day, my glute medius, like the outer side of my hip was on fire. Like afterwards, I got some pretty severe doms, well not severe doms, but like I felt like that muscle was worked. So I think doing some unilateral leg work, even just once a week, could make a big difference for the position of my knee in these back squats. But we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, yeah, five sets of two with 150 is pretty decent for me. Next week, we're going to see if we can up the weights and maybe even add an extra set. But yeah, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.